When discussing physical systems, something of the utmost importance is our frame of reference and how we represent that in a coordinate system. I want to take the time to discuss different coordinate systems, from the basic Cartesian coordinates to spherical polar coordinates. I also want to talk about dot products, cross products, derivatives and integrals, but that's a bit too much for a single video. First of all, it is important to note that the coordinate system may be moved to any position in space relative to the question, or indeed rotated in any way. It is arbitrary. All that matters is the relative distance and angles as defined by the coordinate system, but not where the origin is. Any coordinate system can be converted to a different coordinate system without changing the physical process that is occurring within it. Of course, the coordinate system is a very useful mathematical construct, but the universe doesn't care what coordinate system we use, where it's placed, or even if we use a coordinate system at all. The most basic coordinate system is Cartesian coordinates. This has an x, y, and z axes, which are all perpendicular to each other. In right-handed coordinates, the direction of the positive axes are defined by the right-hand rule, which has z, x, and y, like so. I can define the position vector of some object as the number of steps I need to travel in the x, y, and z axes from the origin to get to that object. This, of course, means that I can break any problem into three different one-dimensional problems uh, where I solve in each of the different axes. But what if I have, for example, a wire? I could define the cross-section of the wire using x squared plus y squared equals the radius squared, but that's a little difficult to work with. So why don't instead I define some radius out from the center of the wire and some angle that that radius vector is. This is polar coordinates and we can turn this into cylindrical polar coordinates by also taking some z direction as the length along the wire. So here instead of x, y and z we have r, theta and z. It is now easy to describe any position inside or outside the wire in terms of its distance r from the center of the wire and the angle and distance along the wire. This becomes very useful if you want to, for example, calculate the magnetic field that would be formed if you ran a current through the wire, which depends on how far you are away from the wire. or if you charge the wire to some amount and want to calculate the electric field, you need the distance from the wire. You could use it by calculating that from x and y, but it's far easier to simply use cylindrical polar coordinates in this case. But what if I have something like the Earth? A sphere? Well, again, using Cartesian coordinates is a little bit awkward. So we don't. We use latitude and longitude, which are based on spherical polar coordinates. So let's define something on the surface of a sphere, say the Earth. Now, I can project that point onto the xy plane, and take the angle that point makes with the x-axis, and this is called the azimuthal angle. Or, in the case of the Earth, longitude. Next, I need to know where I am relative to the poles, so I take another angle which is the angle between my point and the z-axis. This is the polar angle, or latitude. For geography, we're done. This is good enough. We all know that we are on the surface of the Earth, but in physics we also want to know our distance from the centre of our sphere may not necessarily be the Earth. So we also take a radius. Thus, we can define any point as two angles and a distance, and we have our spherical polar coordinates. Let's do an example. So I have a vector, a position vector of point P in Cartesian coordinates given by 4, 5, 2. That's 4 in the x direction, 5 in the y direction, and 2 in the z direction. So if we draw that out, and we have some point P. 
So now we want to convert to cylindrical coordinates. So now with cylindrical coordinates, we have a z, some radius r out, and some angle. So the radius r out is going to be the projection onto the xy plane, which is here. Uh, so the length of this here, and the angle here, and we don't have to do anything with z through the square root of x squared plus y squared, which is root 41. For the angle, we have cosine adjacent over hypotenuse, theta equals arc cos of 4 over root 41. And our z stays the same, so we now get p in cylindrical coordinates is equal to root 41 r hat plus arc cos 4 over root 41 theta hat plus 2 z hat, where the hatted vectors are equal to the unit vector, i.e. a vector of magnitude 1 in their respective directions. So now we want to go to spherical coordinates, and this time, instead of having our radius just being this, this projected radius onto the xy plane, we want our radius to actually be this whole radius here, which is going to be x squared plus y squared plus z squared, square rooted, root 45. When we've got spherical coordinates, that's our r. And this angle here is denoted phi by physicists and theta by mathematicians. I'm going to call it phi. This angle here is theta, although the mathematical notation is reversed from the physics notation. We have phi is equal to the same thing as theta was in the cylindrical coordinates, which is arc cos of 4 over root 41. Theta is equal to the angle this makes with the z-axis, which is going to be arc cos of 2 over root 45. I hope you found this informative, and thank you very much for watching. If you're interested in more content like this, please subscribe.